Welcome to Automation of the Week. Every Tuesday, we release another video showing you step-by-step -step how to build out an automation to improve your processes in Salesforce. My name is Brian Hayes, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a flow that will automatically assign a permission set to a user. Now, there's a couple reasons why you might wanna do this. First of all, you might have a lot of new users getting created into your system on a regular basis. If that's the case, you can save yourself some time. Instead of manually assigning a permission set, create an automation that's gonna do that for you. Another reason you might wanna use this is through a screen flow. Perhaps you've got a manager who you want to empower with the ability to choose what permission sets should be applied to that user, but you don't actually wanna give them any admin level permissions within Salesforce. Well, you could create a screen flow walking them through some limited options and then have that screen flow assign the permission set for you. Today though, we're gonna take a look at a record triggered flow as the example, and I'll show you a couple resources that are really helpful to me whenever I'm building out new automations within Salesforce. So that first resource is actually gonna be the Salesforce developer documentation. It's helpful to take a look at two things. One is the data model, because whenever you're dealing with the new feature that you're not very familiar with within Salesforce, it's quite helpful to understand what are all the different objects that are related to each other and how are they related to each other. And then the second thing is going to be looking at the field level data for an object. Again, it's developer documentation, but it will show you the name of a field and the reason it exists. We can help a ton. When you're creating that flow and you don't know what fields are required, which ones aren't, just refer to the documentation and it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of trial and error later. Okay, so our goal today is to assign a permission set automatically. So the first thing to do is let's find that developer documentation. I would find this just by Googling Salesforce developer docs and the name of the object. I search for Salesforce developer docs permission set. The first option that pops up for me is the object reference from the Salesforce platform. And you can see that the website is developer.salesforce.com. I'm gonna open that in a new tab. And then I'm also gonna search for the data model. First option that shows up now is the profile and permission objects data model. Just click into that. And here is this fancy chart, which can be a little bit confusing, but it's actually really helpful because it gives you the lay of the land. So I'm gonna zoom in here a bit for you. The first thing to do is look for an object that you recognize to orient yourself. So here, user. I know what a user record is within Salesforce, and I can see that a user record is related to a permission set assignment, which is related to a permission set. So this is telling us that permission sets aren't directly related to users, there's this other thing in between them, and it's the permission set assignment record. This pattern is really common. It's essentially a junction object that allows multiple permission sets to be applied to multiple users. It allows for many-to-many -many relationships. What we can also see from looking at this chart is that permission set assignment is also related to permission set group. So permission set groups allow you to essentially create a folder with a bunch of permission sets in it, and then when you apply that permission set group, you don't have to apply all of the permission sets within that group. It applies them automatically for you because they're part of the group. That can also save you a ton of time, but what we see here is a permission set group is also related to a user through a permission set assignment. That's what we ultimately want to create. I want Flow to create a permission set assignment that's related to my user on one side and related to my permission set on the other. Let's take a look at our object reference here. So on the right, what I have here is the reference for the permission set object, but actually what I really care about is the permission set assignment object. And I can see that right below it on the left-hand side. And what we get here are a couple useful things. First thing is it's telling us what system permissions somebody needs in order to access this object at all. So a system administrator is gonna have the permissions to manage a user, assign permission sets, view setup and configuration. You need those in order to access this object. And beneath that, it's even more useful. We have the name of each field on that object and a description of what it does. We can see that there's a field called assignee ID, and that's the ID of a user that we want related to this permission set assignment record. Then we scroll down a little bit more. We have an expiration date, which we could add. We can mark whether this permission set assignment is active or inactive and then we could relate it to a permission set group ID or a permission set ID. Now let's actually build out the flow. In Salesforce, I'm gonna go into the setup menu and then bring up Salesforce flows. Search for flow in the upper left-hand corner. 
and create a new flow. For today, I'm gonna to choose record triggered flow and let's have the object be the user that's triggering our flow. So we'll say we'll have this flow start whenever a user is created. And you can add additional conditions here if you'd like. Once that user is created, we could then add another element to create a record. And the record that we wanna create is a permission set assignment. We'll say we're gonna create one record and we're gonna use separate resources and literal values to set what field values we want for that record. So our object will be a permission set assignment. And searching for it, it pops right up under our options here. And now we can choose what fields we wanna set values for in this record. And we can refer back to the developer documentation if we need to. But I know that we want the assignee ID, that's necessary. We definitely want a permission set ID. And then our other options that we could choose are an expiration date or a permission set group ID. I'm gonna leave both of those off. The most important thing is who's this assigned to and what permission set are we assigning? So for the assignee ID, we can use the global variable for the user that started our automation. Select that and choose the record ID. Now we could write in the ID of a permission set in here, but generally it's not a best practice to be writing IDs into a flow. You're better off using variables because it's very common for IDs to change when you're moving from one org to another. So instead of just copy and pasting the ID of that permission set here, I'm gonna put in a filler for now, just put in the number one. And right before that update step, let's go ahead and get records. So what I wanna do here is get the appropriate permission set. Under object, I'm gonna search for permission set. And now we can get a permission set based off another value. So most often you're gonna to wanna to use the name of the permission set here. I'll add name and then for equals, I'm just gonna grab a permission set from our org. Let's say we wanted to apply multi-factor authentication required. If you click into that permission set, you can see that the name is actually multi underscore factor, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna copy that API name instead of the label and paste that into my get record step. Now you could use label too. You could search based off the label, but labels might change. It's pretty rare for API names to change. So whenever possible, use the API name instead. You'll have a more reliable flow as a result. So I'll paste it in, name equals multi-factor authentication required. And that should return just one permission set, one record for us. Now we don't need to store all the fields. That's a little bit inefficient. So instead I'm gonna say choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest. And then I'm not gonna choose any additional fields. The only thing I really care about is the ID of this record and then hit done. Now that we've gotten that record within our flow, we can reference it in our last element where we create that permission set assignment record. I'm gonna replace the one here and instead reference our get step that just happened previously, permission set from get permission set, and I'll select the ID. With that, we'll now be able to assign this permission set whenever a user is being created. If you're gonna go through this process, there's a couple extra things that I would add. I would check to make sure that this permission set isn't already applied to that user. I would also check some of the details of the user to make sure that they're the person that we wanna add a permission set to. For example, maybe you've got different licenses. You've got Salesforce users and perhaps you've got experienced cloud users as well within the system. You don't wanna treat them all the same. You just wanna get the new Salesforce users. So there's a couple extra details like that if you wanna use this in production. The main takeaway of this automation is that if you want to apply a permission set through a flow, you can do that by creating a permission set assignment, whether it's in a record triggered flow or in a screen flow. Let me know if you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.